Welcome. Soho has detected a strange object orbiting between us and the sun. So let's see if we can find out what it is. This is basically going to be a primer of when you see something strange in the data, how to look at it and try to figure out what it is. So let's get started. First we should be sure that we understand what the data is. So let's take a look at the C3 coronagraph images and break down what the various components of it are. In the centre there's a white circle. That represents the true size of the Sun. The dark circle around it is the occulting disk, which blanks out the bright surface of the Sun so we can see the faint outer corona. The dark line in the bottom left is the support bracket for the occulting disk. The bright object to the upper right of the Sun is Venus. It is moving from right to left because the planets rotate around the Sun anti-clockwise and it's on the far side, so with respect to the Earth, it'll be moving from west to east, or right to left. Similarly, because the Earth is rotating around the Sun anti-clockwise, so if we're staring at the Sun, as we move to the right, it'll also make the stars appear as though they're moving to the right. So let's take a look at the C3 video and see if you can identify the object. I'll play it through a couple of times to give you a sporting chance to find it. It's quite subtle. Well, did you see it? Moving from left to right across the image? Here's a map of its path over the five days that we observed it. It's easy moving at a relatively constant rate across the southern part of the image. What on earth could it be? Well, let's take a closer look. I'll run the same movie again, but now just showing the magnified part of the southern hemisphere where the object traverses. Well, seeing as it's moving from left to right across the image, it could be a star. However, it's moving with respect to the background stars, so that can't be the case. So we've just eliminated the star hypothesis. Well, okay, but it could be a comet. Well, could it be Elnin, for example? Well, no, because we know that Elnin is being observed by the Stereo B spacecraft and is nowhere near the Sun as yet. So this isn't Elnin, but it could be another comet but it doesn't seem to have a tail and is not following a normal cometary trajectory. So that rules out the comet hypothesis. Well, could it be an asteroid? Well, that seems a likely possibility. But remember, it's moving from left to right across our field of view, so that means it must be between us and the Sun if it's following the rest of the solar system's direction of orbit. It would either have to be a very big asteroid to be far away from us in this bright, or a very small asteroid very close to us. We can eliminate the small asteroid possibility because it's moving too slowly across our field of view. And if it were a big asteroid, it would probably be known about. I think that makes the possibility that it's an asteroid very remote. What about it being a planet? Well, there are only two planets that orbit inside the Earth's orbit, and that's Venus and Mercury. And we already know where Venus is because we've got an image of it in the same field of view. So the only possibility is that this could be Mercury. When we look at the orbital plot of the inner solar system, we can see that indeed Mercury, the Sun and Venus are all on very much one line when viewed from the Earth. So that makes Mercury a distinct possibility. But I would have thought Mercury would have been much brighter than this. So why is it so faint? Well, if it's between us and the Sun, most of the dark side of Mercury is pointing towards us. So all we're seeing, if anything, is a very, very thin crescent so it would appear very, very dark by comparison to normal. So we have two viable hypotheses. One, that it is a large, newly discovered, by us, asteroid, or that it is Mercury. And the most likely of the two seem to be that it's Mercury. So only time will tell which of those two hypotheses is correct. But you see the process here. You assemble the data. You make an observation. You check the nature of the instrument and of the data itself. Then you set up a series of hypotheses to explain those observations. You eliminate the ones that are obviously eliminatable and see what's left at the end. You then see which is the most probable explanation 
i.e. one that fits the data best, and that's your primary hypothesis. But don't forget the secondary hypotheses that might also be correct. We now might have a sun today asteroid, who knows. But anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.